In this week's episode of the Stock Scores Market Minutes, I'm going to talk about my swing trading strategy and the profitable indicator that I use. Plus, I will do my regular weekly market analysis of stocks, commodities, and currencies. We'll look at the day trade of the week on GGPI and run a market scan that is useful for finding swing trading opportunities. So to begin, what is a swing trade? Well, for me, it is a trade that we hold for anywhere from two days to two weeks. In other words, relatively short time period. Now, I like to take my entry signals off of the 30 minute chart or the 30 minute chart. The core indicator that I use seeks abnormal price action and abnormal volume. So if we're looking at a 30 minute chart, it looks for an abnormal price gain on the 13 minute chart as well as abnormal volume. I'll show you this on a chart in just a moment. Now I've developed my own indicator for that. It's called the action candle and it is one of the indicators that I give to my students, those who complete my active trader program. It can be used in TradeStation, but we can also do searches on stockscores.com to find these and I'll show you that in just a moment. What we're looking for are these action candles breaking from predictive chart patterns. So let's take a look at a chart. And this is a stock that's done fairly well in the last little while. Anywhere that you see abnormal price action with abnormal volume is a potential action candle. So we had one back here. And so that's going to get triggered by the indicator. And then here, and you can see the great gains that this stock made in a relatively short period of time. Now we can do that on the 30 minute chart, which is what this is. We can also do it on the 13 minute chart. So this is a stock that more recently started to behave abnormally, November 5th. You can see the abnormal volume and abnormal price action, and it's made some nice gains since then. And I think it still has more to go. Now it's obvious when you look at that chart, you can see the abnormal price, the abnormal volume. The reality though, is that there are, you know, 10,000 stocks trading in North America. How are we going to find these in a timely way? Well, that's where the indicator comes in. We run this uh, indicator in real time in our active live service for the 13 minute interval. And then you can also run a market scan on stock scores, which I'll show you in a moment. And that will help you find them on a little bit longer term, more like the 30 minute interval. All right. Well, that's this week's topic. Let's get into the market analysis now, starting off with the US markets. And here is the 30 day, 60 minute chart. You can see that we've got a nice upward trend in place Had a little bit of profit taking this week, which is quite reasonable. That's called a flag pattern. So we had this upward move, a short pullback. That's the flag. And then we broke the flag on Friday. So that should lead to more gains in the near term. Longer term trend is still up and has been up for some time. On the weekly chart, you also see that flag pattern. There is the upward trend, the little flag, and then the breakout. So you can see flag patterns on 30 minute charts. You can see it on weekly charts. You can see it on daily charts. It's a great uh, resumption of trend pattern, something to keep an eye out for. On the NASDAQ 100, we had a little bit of profit taking this past week as well, but Friday's action makes me think that we should be okay near term. We'll keep a close eye on it. Looking at the Russell 2000, which of course made that breakout through resistance last week or two weeks ago, and this week, a little bit of profit taking after the breakout, very typical, but I think the small caps are ultimately headed higher. On the Canadian markets, the TSX 60, 30 day, 60 minute chart, nice upward trend, buyers in control, maybe getting a little extended to the upside, but still a good chart to be long of. And the long-term weekly chart in a nice upward trend there, no reason to jump ship yet, uh, perhaps a little bit overbought, but still no sign of breakdown. The TSX Venture broke its downward trend line about five weeks ago and has been moving up ever since. It's going to likely get some resistance up here, but this market typically does well from November until May. It doesn't happen that all the way, but most years that's what happens. Of course, in 2020, we had the COVID crash along the way, but ultimately it did quite well going into the summer. 
On currencies, US dollar had a good week this week, breaking out. We of course had the initial breakout six weeks ago, and then we're now getting a resumption. Probably stall here for a week or two, but I think ultimately US dollar more likely to go higher than lower. On Bitcoin, GBTC is the ETF, and it is coming into resistance, although Bitcoin itself is beyond resistance, but basically strong upward trend again. And uh, if you are long of this, I would stay long, but uh, you know, it's very volatile. So traders will maybe wanna take some profit in the near term. On Ethereum, it is actually outperforming Bitcoin, as I've talked about for a number of weeks now, and remains a hold. And on to commodities, gold had a good strong week this week. Despite that strength in the US dollar, gold is starting to tickle through its downward trend line. And I think with inflation concerns being very real in the market right now, uh, gold is something to consider and gold mining stocks, a place to probably put a little bit of capital right now. On the oil sector, uh, we've had a little bit of profit taking the last three weeks, but it is still in a long-term upward trend. Kind of reminds me of what happened back here in the late uh, spring, early summer, and now a little bit of that again. But until the upward trend line gets broken, I think generally be optimistic about oil and oil stocks. So finally, the fear chart, fear very little, no fear, and therefore nothing to really be concerned about, although that can change very quickly if we get a break of the upward trend line. So my ratings then, bullish on both time frames for US and Canadian stocks. Gold, I've switched to now bullish on both time frames. Oil, bullish long-term, but neutral short-term as it goes through that pullback. The uptrend is well underway for Canadian and US large cap stocks. And I think the opportunity isn't great there because you're chasing an upward trend. I think the better opportunity comes from where we see new trends starting. And right now, I see that in small caps, which broke out two weeks ago, and precious metals, which have been showing life the last week or two. Now, oil is stalling, but it still is in that long-term upward trend. I think that's a hold. We wanna focus on alpha stocks because the market is, uh, in many cases, well into the trend. Focus on those alpha stocks that can trade on their own story or the sectors that show alpha characteristics. So, like I said, the small caps and precious metals. And of course, fear is low. All right, let's take a look at the day trade of the week now, an example of a trade that we found in the Active Live service. And this is a stock that triggered a two minute action candle, my profitable indicator for day trading, swing trading, position trading, looking for that abnormal activity that is so important early in a trend. Now, GGPI triggered an action candle about just after noon uh, Eastern time on the, the two minute interval. And you can see a nice pattern here. It was trading sideways with optimism, broke out with the action candle. You see the volume spiking up. I can find this because I've got a computer or a couple of computers monitoring all US stocks in real time, looking for these things. And so while most people might find it 10 minutes later, I can find them early using that indicator. So for every $100 of risk, this trade required 1,110 shares, a little bit more capital intensive, $12,676 in capital. But of course you can leverage that three to one. And that meant $4,225 of capital. By the end of the day, the trade was up 15.4 times risk. That means for every $100 of risk, there was $1,540 of profit. And with the margin, that was a 36% return on a one day hold. All right, let's take a look now at the stock scores market scan and how you can utilize it to find swing trades. If we jump into the market scan now on stock scores, the first thing I'm gonna do is set my default chart to a 30 day, 30 minute, or even a 15 day, 30 minute. I do that by going down to the chart option tab. And here I can switch this to intraday. And we're gonna go back, uh, well, we're gonna type in 30. And we're going to go back, say, 15 days and create chart. Uh, oh, made a mistake. I'm not sure what I did wrong. Let's go back to chart options. Not 120 minute candles. I want 30 minute candles. So this is something I like to run about a half an hour after the market opens. So we're doing it on after the market's closed already. That's fine. Now that we've set our default chart, we can go to the market scan tool and select the stock scores simple swing scan which is found under the active trader scans 
and anyone that is an active trader member of stock scores has access to this and it found lots of stocks making moves on uh, Friday. So for example, IQST, if you're doing this scan an hour after the market opens, this is a 15 day, 30 minute chart. You see the stock is boring, nothing happening. And then it comes alive. So you buy that in the first hour at 52, 53 cents. By the end of the day, it's 62 cents. The key is to look for the abnormal activity breaking from low volatility. Now on Sundial, it was not breaking from low volatility on Friday. It made that break on the 6th of November. You can see there the volume picked up and that really telegraphed what came later in the week. You know, at 67 cents, it makes the break. And then Friday, the stock gapped up on news um, over 90 cents at the open. So, you know, almost a 60% gain, 50% gain, sorry, in the uh, first, uh, in about a week. And that's really what a swing trade is all about. Here's another example, THM. Had some abnormal activity there, but really better mid middle of the day on Friday. And you run this market scan every half an hour or so. There's the abnormal volume, the abnormal price action. That's at, you know, 80 cents and it goes up to 95 cents. Now you'll notice I'm talking about pretty low price stocks, but the scan will do this on any stock. As we go through the scan results, we are getting more and more expensive. I've just got the list shorted or sorry, sorted by abnormal behavior based on price. And if I wanted to, I could jump ahead to, you know, page five, let's say, and that'll be some more expensive stocks. And oh, wow, we're into the $3 stocks there. And what I'm looking for are those breaks from low volatility. The pattern that you want to see is something like this. This is a decent one. So I'm going to blow this up here. You've got rising bottoms, flat top. That pattern is called an ascending triangle. You see the abnormal volume coming in, the breakout, that's at 373. By the end of the day, it's at 382. And I think that stock has decent potential. Now, if I'd like this time frame, the next step is to always look at the daily time frame to make sure there's no resistance. And on SF, SIFY, there is an issue there with resistance on the daily. So for that reason, although the 30 minute chart looked good, I would not take this because of the daily chart. All right, so that's the basic concept. You can learn more about it in the Active Trader course available at StockScores.com. You can go to the StockScores website, go to the Trader Training menu, learn how to trade, and you can learn lots about the different things that we offer to teach people my strategies and really how to do better in the market. Hope you've enjoyed this week's Market Minutes. If so, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, tell your enemies, and most importantly, trade well.